Today I'm taking you back to the coast for a slightly different kind of tutorial. This is not about painting a pretty picture. It's about doing the work. The work that helps you become a better artist and paint any subject you can imagine. So how do you do that? It's all about close observation and color notes. I'll show you my entire process in first person view so you can see my color mixing, hear all of my thoughts, and watch how I teach myself about colors. Let's get started. I'm here in Lossy Mouth again, first day of June, and I'm going over there. <laughs> they just built a new bridge over to the other side of the beach, and I'm gonna go check it out because I can finally go closer to the dunes and paint the dunes. probably like, Sarah, why are you so obsessed with dunes? <laughs> why do you paint them so much? I actually don't paint them that often, but I share a lot of photos whenever I do paint them. Uh, but anyways, it's because of the colors. I'll explain as I go. It may not show up in the video, but the shadows are actually quite blue and even a little purple. And that is something that combined with the greens and the brilliant sand is so attractive. The color combinations that I find on the beach, especially with dunes, is just, it appeals to me so much. You have so many varieties of green in this one little patch of grass. You have the wispy textures of the grass as they reach up towards the sky and the beautiful long strands of shadow that fall across the sand below. And those are very fun shapes and patterns to paint. By the way, I do have a couple tutorials on YouTube and my Patreon about painting dunes. So if you wanna check that out, I'll try to remember to add the video link in the description. <laughs> finished with this teeny little sketchbook. <laughs> I've had it for a while. When did I start it? March 25th, 2021. So a little over a year ago, but I kind of lost it for a while and forgot about it. And I actually painted these dunes last summer in this sketchbook somewhere. At least I thought it, yeah, there we go. Uh, looking at the dunes from across the water where I was when I parked before I walked over the bridge. This is the first time I'm using this little pouch. Let's see what I brought. All of my usual drawing utensils are over here and some old brushes and some new brushes over here. And of course we have the gouache palette, which is pretty much freshly cleaned and I've only used it twice since I deep cleaned it and everything's still nice and juicy and fresh and I'm looking forward to getting it messy again. <laughs> no, I'm not looking forward to that, but it just, it's a good sign. It means you're using it a lot, right? Uh, and the water dish is going to be over here on the right. Have my spray bottle and my little white tube of gouache because I always use fresh white. It's always a challenge to record outside. If you're wondering how the heck I'm recording this with like a first person view, <laughs> this is how I'm recording it. <laughs> I just give my sketchbook a quick mist just to start off. I just want to practice mixing 
some colors. So I'm going to start with a swatch of the pure yellow ochre. A little more yellow, a little more white. Virtual Sarah here. <laughs> I wanted to pop in and quickly explain what's happening. So the first thing I do when I sit down is look around me not necessarily for a specific subject, but just at the overall scene and the colors that I find around me. So in this case, I'm starting with the sand tones and I'm adding bits of orange, bits of red, bits of white, and just playing with the spectrum. So as I put it down on the paper, I can compare my color note with what is in front of me and, you know, make decision or make adjustments based on that. And as I switch between different subjects, like the sand to the shadows to the grass, I'm just starting with basic colors and then making adjustments. So it's not about getting it right the first time. That's really rare. Um, maybe, you know, after 20 years, you're painting the same subject, you can do it really fast. But in every lighting situation, the color is going to change anyway. So this is more about training your eye to see what's in front of you and practice mixing it, which is extremely difficult difficult. And I find it especially difficult in harsh light like this. So that's why I do this as often as possible. Even though in the studio, I can sit down and paint a beach or some dunes and I can get it right. When I'm outside, this is more about training my eye. The more you do this, the more you can paint almost any subject and painting from life becomes easier. And Something that I want to focus on this summer is painting better greens. So soon I'll be going to some fields nearby and painting greens and a nearby forest and painting other types of greens. And there's going to be lots of color notes and observation. So please let me know if this kind of thing is helpful, if you like hearing my thought process as I go, and I will continue to make these videos. Okay, back to the painting. And then let's go with some grassy tones. So I'll go with olive green, straight out of the tube, very earthy, and then we'll add some ultramarine. And that's a nice shadow version, but then let's add some more yellow to brighten it up. And remember my green, my yellow is very opaque and vibrant. And how about some clean bright green with helio turquoise and a bit of yellow. Didn't mix that enough. And maybe a bit of white. Just desaturate it. Give us like a highlight version. I think that's a pretty good selection of colors. After I do my color notes, I paint a mini version of something in front of me. So in this case, I'll paint a little bit of grass with some shadows on the sand using those color notes I just mixed. And then we'll do the shadows. So that was ultramarine blue with a bit of white and permanent lizard and crimson. Oh no, I used burnt sienna, that was it. This one's a little more red than the one I had in the test swatch sheet, so I don't know if that'll work. One of the biggest challenges I find when I'm painting outside in harsh light like this is how different the colors look in shadow and sun. And I'll talk about that in a minute, but it's something to keep in mind. So my suggestion is to paint in both shadow and in sun, in full sun, so that you can see those differences and begin to learn how that affects your painting. I'll start with the darker version of the grass. I 
There's sand in my paint. <laughs> oh no. I think there's sand in my paper towel and that's how it's getting in my paint. I also want to point out that if you're painting the same subject many, many times, not necessarily in the same day, but like over long periods of time, you begin to notice subtle detail and differences in color each session. So in my case, I've painted these dunes multiple times. The first time I sat down to paint them, I barely noticed anything that I noticed yesterday. <laughs> so it was more of a case of just introducing my mind and my eyes to what was in front of me the first time. And then as I continued to go back and paint more and more, I could see a lot more subtle differences. Okay, here are my very messy notes. <laughs> uh, just wrote down the color combinations and then some quick notes about how, like what order I did everything in. I know I could paint the shadows more blue, but I love purple shadows. So, um, also, wow, the sand looks really yellow. I don't know if it's, that's crazy. I need to make it more um, neutral, more like a light beige, I guess. That is definitely one of the hard parts about painting in such harsh light, because if you paint in the shadows, your colors look a certain way and then you look at it in the light and it's very shocking. <laughs> okay, this time I'm going to attempt to make it a little more sand. It needs to be a little less yellow. Still too yellow. So let's go with the little burnt sienna. Okay, this time I'm going to paint in full sun so I can kind of monitor whether my colors are accurate. I think I need... what do I need? This is really good practice for like trying to see colors. I think it's just a little more pink. Instead of yellow, I'm going to lean it towards, towards pink. So that means a lot of white, a little bit of burnt sienna, and a little bit of red, maybe a tiny bit of yellow ochre, but not a lot because I don't want it to lean towards, towards yellow. Let's go with that. I mean, it's hard to see because this is really light gray paper and this is in full sun <laughs> so this first layer is maybe I mean we have to wait and see how it dries so what's next okay shadow color let's go with a more indigo blue this time but I'm gonna sat desaturate it a little bit with that color Maybe a tiny bit more purple. So this time a little red. Actually, I actually think that's pretty good because it's, it's quite dark. Um, let's just try it. Okay, this is definitely worth pointing out. When I just said, okay, let's just try it. That is something that happens constantly when you're painting outside. And so often I find myself for a split second just wishing I had some instructor or some amazing painter standing next to me telling me if I'm doing it right. But I realize I'm on this journey myself and the only way I can learn whether something works or not is to just do it. And I think that kind of sums up this whole video. <laughs> so s taking time to go out, observe, mix the color and make adjustments over and over and over and over again. And I mean, that's what we do all the time anyway in the studio and basically anytime we paint, right? It's a matter of training yourself how to see, but then also learning the mixes. Over time, you become very familiar with certain subjects and it'll become much easier and you know you, you have like a good place to start from when you sit down and paint. But when it's your first time, especially, there's a lot of guesswork and a lot of adjusting. It might work. 
but there is yellow in there. So I'm gonna mix some yellow in just in these foreground bits. This brush is too thick. It's okay. It's just a test. Well, that works pretty well. Maybe a little bit of white as like a final version. It's like that when the sun is glaring and it just looks like some of the grasses are pure white almost. Yeah, wow, look at the color differences in these. <laughs> Yellow, pink. <laughs> it's somewhere in between those two. <laughs> Right, there we go, there's the notes. My eyeballs hurt from the sun and I have kind of a sun headache. So, oh my God, look how much sand is on that. Mm -hmm. 